Familiar parts of the city's built environment will be transformed in the weeks ahead by the sound, lighting, performance collective Masari Studios. The locations range from the Macy's building to the Old South Meeting House. To tell us what's being prepared are two percussionist composers, Maria Finkelmeyer and Ryan Edwards. Uh, thank you both very much for being with us. Thanks for having us. First of all, uh, Maria, talk about the history of this collective, what brought you all together and why? Absolutely. So we actually met in around 2014 for the Illuminous Festival in the SOA district, where the director of the festival, Jeff Grants, uh, kind of organically put us together, said, you guys do really great work, Ryan, myself and Sam, let's see what you come up with. And we had um, a great experience working in 2014. And in 2015, um, Jeff came to us and said, well, we'd like to do something with Fenway Park. And we think you guys would be like a good match again. Um, and through that, we created our first large scale, kind of the first uh, project that I think we're really proud of and really defines our work as a collective. And that's called Waking the Monster, um, which you can see there. And we had nine percussionists on the backside of Fenway Park and the Green Monster playing six compositions in which we um, worked hand in hand with the an video animation by Sam, where we actually triggered the animation um, to all of this through composed music. And it was a really powerful statement. It, it brought us together at the end. We said, hey, that went really well. We really like each other still through the ups and the downs of creating brand new public art. Maybe we should um, continue as a collective. And since then, we've done various large scale projects around the city. Ryan, you know, I, I refer to this as a built environment, but it's, it's a performance space. It's an acoustical space. What, what's this all feel like? Well, um, the, the backside of Fenway Park in particular um, feels great. <laughs> I mean, it's huge steel pieces with, you know, iron coverings over these I-beams, you know, they're, they're drums and they happen to be three stories tall. They have a name, they're part of urban folklore and they sound awesome. So it's a, I mean, it's a treat to explore it. I mean, that was part of our job was mm -hmm. to climb around on it and find sounds that made sense. Um, and then map those sounds and make that kind of instrument, like kind of codify it as an instrument, and then make that instrument available to local composers to then write for it. And then kind of manage that discussion between local composers, percussionists, and uh, a wall <laughs> that's a name, that's named, you know, and, and try to like elicit something that was relatable. Um, so yeah. Another place which you've, you've been to, uh, Maria, is the Boston Center for mm -hmm. the Arts, the mm -hmm. Cyclorama. Absolutely. What was going, describe that from, yeah. from, from that. Um, so you brought up acoustics, asking us, what does that space feel like? And each of our projects, we kind of come in with this idea, we want to play the space, we want to create something that is just for this environment. And for the BCA in particular, the Cyclorama has a lot of history, and it also sounds very unique. As a circular building with a dome on top, the acoustics, um, consists of a lot of reverb. So if you talk, if I'm here and you're on the other side, we actually can't really communicate well because my voice is distorted or there's like a rhythmic pulse to that voice. So that really inspired us in that project saying, okay, if I play a drum in here, that drum will actually sound 10 times. How do we write music for that? How do we create an experience that is pleasurable, that it um, elicits a reflection from the audience? And what we ended up doing was having the musicians surround the audience. The audience was in the middle of the space uh, and wrote a piece for eight percussionists and four vocalists. And that, again, um, as Ryan said, we with the Green Monster, we, we looked at the space, we looked at the folklore, we looked at the the... the the stories that come with the Fenway Park and with the BCA, we, we looked at what did the original painting of the Battle of Gettysburg look like and feel like, um, and that kind of uh, supported our music and the narrative we were trying to tell through that project. And Ryan, what about the, uh, the dance complex mm -hmm. in Cambridge? Uh, oh yeah, sure. Well, the dance complex just this last year celebrated its 25th anniversary. Um, and I've been a big part of the dance complex since I was a teenager playing dance classes and taking dance classes. So their director, Peter DeMuro, um, asked us to help celebrate. Um, and, and his statement was one um, uh, called Dance Happens Here. And how could we kind of tell that story on, on the facade of the building in an exterior, very public way um, to people who maybe just heard the music coming out of the windows, but really, how could we really, you know, kind of put the dancers on the skin of the building and really look at the building as a stage for choreography? So we worked with um, Peter and dancers from the dance complex and um, did a a two-day green screen shoot where we captured dancers interacting with uh, scale models of the architecture. And then Sam Oak um, kind of made a, a composition through those pieces that were then projected on two um, 
of the facades of the building. Mm -hmm. So it kind of, we closed Mass Ave, we had a big dance party in the street, <laughs> Maria and Drew scored it live. So there was a, you know, this big public dance happens here. It was just this, you know, statement that was um, what the building really is, but the building being able to say it mm -hmm. itself. And I was looking like La La Land, except it's in Cambridge. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, it yeah. was, you know, you can see it's like people three stories tall. Yeah. You know, ballet shoes moving down the side of a building. I mean, there was, it was a joy for us to mm -hmm. sit on the street and just watch people be surprised mm -hmm. um, at the scale. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that this kind of, um, like, sound and light and color can happen um, on that level, but in our city. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that we might feel, I think we're starting to kind of pull the string at that, where it's, it's not just Montreal or New York or, or um, like, Perpignan or something. It's, it's you know, it's like we're doing it right here, and for people to stumble on it, I think, is the greatest joy for us. This is BNN News, and we're talking with Maria Finkelmeyer and Ryan Edwards from Masari Studios. Maria, uh, looking mm -hmm. ahead, yeah. you're going to be doing something at the Macy's building, and uh -huh. I'm thinking of chimes to, you know, tell us it's time to buy things for the holidays, <laughs> but, but you, you've got something in, uh, different in mind here, right? Absolutely. So um, the piece we're going to be called, we're calling it Gridlock. We're going to use a piece that Ryan has created called Sound Sculpture. Um, Ryan, would you want to tell us a little sure. bit about Sound Sculpture sure. first? Um, sound Sculpture is a series of 25 plastic cubes that are about uh, 17 inches on each side, so the size of like a chair you might sit on, and they are location aware. So meaning wherever you move them in a space that we set up, um, that is like moving a note around on the, on the staff. Mm -hmm. So moving it up or down will change the pitch, higher or lower, moving it left or right will change its, its position in time. Mm -hmm. So it's actually like a big physical musical instrument. Mm -hmm. So we are creating a piece that integrates um, that um, in the downtown crossing area and then uh, projects the movement of those cubes onto the side of Macy's. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like making a musical instrument that you can get inside and play. The mm -hmm. public moves around and plays mm -hmm. it, has fun, build shapes, but those shapes actually make sound unique to that shape. Mm -hmm. And then they are also creating the visual um, tapestry that Sam was projecting on the side of Macy's. Uh, and one more coming up, Maria, is, uh -huh. is at the Old South Meeting yes, House. And exactly. I guess this is a case where the place making makes the music then is opposed to the other way around maybe. Absolutely. Um, so we've been graciously uh, commissioned by the National Park Service to bring an art piece to the Trails to Freedom. And we've chosen the Old South Meeting House as our location for this piece. And we did a lot of digging and reading about uh, what is the Old South Meeting House? What happened there? A lot of things happened at the Old South Meeting House. How can we as artists bring that to light, bring that uh, to the public through music and, and projection. And we, we decided that our voices weren't enough and we really wanted to reach out to the community. Um, we were calling the piece Harsh is Truth. And as a place for meeting, um, a lot of truths have been shared and a lot of truths that dispute one another have been shared at this place. So we were thinking a lot about what that looked like in the past and what that looks like now and went out on the Freedom Trail and asked people, what is your truth? How do you share your truth? Are meeting places important? What is free speech? The Old South Meeting House has a free speech policy. What does that mean to you? Does that matter to you? And we had a lot of really um, thoughtful and honest responses to our questions in which we recorded. Um, and we also asked people if they weren't comfortable speaking, they could write their answers and we would take pictures of them. So the music that we're creating um, will actually include those samples, those recordings of those voices, as well as the writing, uh, literally the writing on the wall will be created by the community. Um, so we're really looking forward to this performance. It's going to be free and open to the public. And we hope that people experience the Old South Meeting House in a brand new way. And uh, through that experience, creating some sort of gathering community, uh, some conversation around um, truth. And is it harsh or is it not? Yeah, so the dates for these two upcoming? Um, the Old South Meeting House project called Harshest Truth will be on November 16th. The gridlock performance at Downtown Crossing is a part of the Luminous Festival, so it feels like we're going home. <laughs> and that'll be on November 3rd and 4th. And Ryan, of course, you've got your website so people can check out that for details yeah. as well. MassariStudios.com. Mm -hmm. Thank you both very much, Ryan Edwards and Maria Finkelmeyer from Masari Studios. We'll have more news in just a moment.